Hello, Build Show Network. Steve Basic Architect. Yes, I'm down in the basement again. It's a, the project that we're doing with Shoreline Builders down here. And uh, today we're going to talk about floor framing, um, specifically in the basement. And I wanted to just point out a couple things and uh, talk through a couple things with you all. And then we'll jump back to the studio and break out the framing plan. But the first thing I want to mention is you can see here, nothing really falls below the floor joist, right? Everything is up. Notice, you know, we have the beam drop, but everything from the bottom of the floor joist down is nice and clear. There's no plumbing, there's no heating. So I call that the clean basement. And then if you jump on the other side here, you notice, well, here we got piping, we got ductwork, we got the HVAC unit, got a whole bunch of things happening. And as we swing around, you can see we have all that ductwork and stuff happening down here. So I label this as the dirty basement. So we basically have this line, clean basement, dirty basement. And um, when we talk about framing, and this is actually when I'm laying out the framing plans, it's always good to understand clean versus dirty basement. So that you notice here, the beam is dropped, but it's dropped intentionally. And the intention there is that not only do the floor joists sit on top, but more importantly, as we back up here, you can see the duct runs from the dirty basement where the big trunk is. They come off the top. Well, they run down and then they run across and they feed to different parts of the house, but they're able to be maintained up there simply because we drop the beam here, right? So as we follow this beam along and you see more of the dirty basement there, well, that beam comes into what we call an LVL hanger. And you can see that one's uh, pretty sturdy. I don't know, there's probably every bit of, uh, I don't know, 40 nails in that hanger to hang that triple. And it gets hung by this little header here, across here. But notice on that header, that header is actually doing double duty because that header comes up and then it picks up what we call a flush framed beam. Now, because that's the stairway, we really didn't have to worry about any HVAC or anything going through there. So you notice that those are just simple joist hangers and it's all hung. This here, if you're wondering, that's a radon vent. So that goes down sub slab, goes all the way up. And then that comes back here and we have a little transition. And so this transition happens down at the bottom of the stairs. So this allows you to come down the stairs and have a nice place kind of resting space here to be able to turn to come into the clean basement where the dirty basement's on the other side. And with that header, it comes down and then we do the reverse of what's happening on the other side. We're actually picking up a column here that's carrying some framing on the second floor. You notice I do this quite often where, you know, we simply just have two lolly columns parked next to each other. Just one's carrying that beam, one's carrying that beam. And then this one drops down again. And it's for that same reason. We have dirty basement on the other side and we have clean basement on this side where we have the HVAC run running down that basement. So anyways, let's uh, go back to the office and uh, We'll talk about this. We'll break out the framing plans and we'll talk about what we did here. So I'll see you back at the studio. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the studio. Hopefully you enjoyed that uh, trip out there. I know some of you, uh, you know, occasionally get some comments. You know, you get the finger pointing and uh, that video. But, uh, you know, it's uh, I just want to make a quick point. It's a challenge sometimes doing these videos because sometimes I get out at the job site like I was there and I'm able to capture a moment, but there's nobody else at the job site with me. So it's just me. So sometimes you end up with me on the uh, not camera face of the camera. So you get my finger pointing around, walking around, but uh, remember what we're after. I'm here to share some information and talk to you about the project. It's not necessarily about me being on the camera. So anyways... Welcome back to the studio. We got our good friend here, Big Red. We're going to dive into uh, the floor framing plan. I broke it out so we can illustrate some of those things that we talked about on the job site, illustrate those on paper, and uh, let's dive into it. All right, everybody. So here 
we have a floor framing plan for the uh, floor frame that was just above the basement that we just walked through. So we're not going to get into everything that's in the floor framing plan. Um, I will point out a few things. Obviously, this is the perimeter of the basement, right? Not a whole lot of magic there. So that's where the concrete walls were cast. So when you're walking around there and you see a concrete wall, those are the boundary conditions for that. All right. The beams that we uh, talked about were this one here. Remember, I talked about that going into that LVL hanger right there. Little transfer beam there. And then this one, as it's called out here, that's a flush condition. This one here is a dropped condition. So they are labeled so that the framer knows the elevation at what those are placed. Obviously, dropped means dropped below the floor framing. Flush means flush to the floor framing, and you can't see them here because I colored over them, but you'll see it calls out for joist hangers here. So each one of these joists have a joist hanger on it because it's a flush condition, whereas when it's a drop condition, the joists either fly over the top of it or they'll fly up to it and they'll get broken on the center of that beam. And then we have that double lolly column, and then that takes us to this condition here, which again, if we find it uh, dropped three inch and three quarter by nine and a quarter inch LVLs. So dropped flush. So it's flush from there to there. It's dropped here. And this one is dropped. And when we look at it, kind of as an overarching um, picture, you'll notice that the flush condition, like I talked about in the video, is where the stair is, right? So that's the opening to the stair. And we have a couple fill-in joists there because we're picking up the uh, stair opening on the other side, but that's a flush condition. There's really no reason to have that as a drop beam because I can't take anything into that stair opening like an HVAC duct, a PVC pipe, or anything like that because it would be in the stair opening. So I push that beam all the way up, make it a flush condition. Um, so that being said, you'll also notice that with this line on the house, it basically splits the basement from the clean basement to what I label as the dirty basement. And you'll notice that it usually isn't a clean split, and these are tied to bearing walls and bearing points above the house and transfer through the house and do a bunch of things there. But the, the important thing, I guess, of note here is that this split between the clean and the dirty, it's probably a 60-40-ish, right? So it's somewhere in between that. It's not really a 50-50. It's a 60-40 uh, split here. Um, and what we're trying to do is we have an access way here from the garage. We have a door there. And we have the stairs that come down. And remember, they drop us in this area here. So being dropped in that area, I have the ability to either go straight, turn right, or turn left. In this case here, we've made our future plans to turn right. And what that does is it basically set this up so that this whole section of basement here that I labeled as the clean basement, that's what we would hold in high regard for any future finishing in the basement. So if we wanted to put a fitness room down there, a playroom for the grandkids in their case, or a TV, mu the theater room, music room, number of those things that, uh, you know, you can put down there, craft rooms. Um, I've, I've done some crazy stuff too. I've done archery range for a professional archer. I'm doing a house right now where we'll actually have a gun range um, in the basement. I've done um, 
what are the uh, golf simulators in the basement for uh, uh, a family of very avid golfers. So there's a lot of things that, you know, basements can become in the future. So having that 60-40 split, it was somewhat a no-brainer to say, okay, on the dirty part of the basement here, this is where we'll put equipment. We'll run ductwork and run the ductwork through there. And then we have another system over here that runs a series of ductwork. The water heater is here. Um, it just so happens in this case that this side is the street side. Right? So what does that have to do with the clean and dirty basement? Well, we need water to get into the house. We need electricity to get into the house. We need sewer to get out of the house. And I think it goes out here. Um, uh, some pump in the basement here in the corner. Right? So, you have all these sump pumps, sewers, water, electrical, all these things need to come in and along with electrical is certainly cable um, and all of those services. So those all need to come in, they typically come into boxes, all of that stuff. So, you know, having the electrical panel on the wall here and the water heater over here, just inside the water service, all of those things kind of make sense on that dirty side of the basement and it allows again for us to keep this clean so we're not dodging a water heater or an air handler or a sump pit over here right we're not doing that because we've taken care of all of that in what we call the dirty side of the basement and all of our subcontractors via you know Jim and the, the gents at Shoreline and Taylor you know, they're very good at pointing out to all the HVAC subs that we don't want anything falling below these floor joists unless we absolutely have to. Now, they, we have a sink and we have a, a drain and stuff that we have to uh, take down. So occasionally we have something, we'll hold it tight to the wall and we'll just pat out that wall should we go to finish it. But for the most part, nothing happens below those joists. And by having those ducts here and having that drop, that allows us to run stuff in those joist bays and run them out to HVAC ducts um, out at the perimeter there and be able to fully service the house and keep everything inside of that frame. Now, we're not going to go back and we're not doing any immediate finishing to this house, but we like to plan... Um, in the future to make sure that we've accounted for that. A little side note on framing plans too. If you notice, there's a toilet in red there, there's a toilet in red there, and there's a shower in red there. These are drains that you really don't have the ability to migrate, right? The toilet drain is where the toilet drain is. And so I superimpose the plumbing fixtures on the framing plan to ensure that we're falling somewhere in between that joist bay. And the same with the shower drain, so that we're not going to put the shower in and the plumber looks at it, starts drilling and realizes that the drain is directly at top of the floor joist. We try to um, take care of that system long before um, it becomes a problem to eliminate those as problems. So anyways, Clean basement, dirty basement. We put all the mechanicals, run all that stuff through here, muck up this side of the house. Meanwhile, we're keeping this whole area nice and clean. So, that's all we got for now. All right. Big red earned his keep this week. So, anyways, hopefully you enjoyed that. We uh, got a little further explanation, looked at some uh, floor framing layout, and uh, why we do what we do. So, if you're trying to find more, you can find me at Steve Basic Architect on Instagram. Um, you can find my daughter, Alexandra Basic, on Instagram, too. We're always putting up good information. Um, you can find me, along with my uh, longtime friends, Jake Bruton and Peter Yost on the Unbuild It podcast. We're uh, live on YouTube and all the uh, media outlets for podcasts. Go ahead and listen. We talk about everything.
building science, building industry, business, books, everything related. So, and uh, we have fun doing it. So it's a, it's a treat to watch too. Um, and of course, you got the Build Show Network. I know you found this video, but realize there's literally hundreds of other videos out there free for your watching. Um, my good friends, Matt, Brent, Wade, and Jake putting out outstanding information and um, the uh, recently added uh, Drywall Shorty, Mechanical Hub, Zach Detmore, and Design Build Doug all putting forth some great information, right? You're, if you're looking for stuff that's relevant and up to date, go check it out. Tons of videos there. Remember, you gotta watch them seven times too. Uh, that's what the science says. Anyways, that's uh, everything uh, I can share about clean and dirty basements. Where to find more information. And uh, until next time, long live our buildings.